Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Luke. And this is Will Will and Luke Luke Discuss. A vodcast. And podcast. Where we discuss content related to psychology, personal growth, self-development, and well-being. This This episode, episode, we're discussing... The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss. And I see that as a... It's a book about how to design your lifestyle such that it's what you really want it to be rather than living to the blueprint of working nine to five and then retiring once you've earned enough money when you're old and then starting to enjoy life at that point. So he makes the suggestion of like finding ways to earn money more remotely and more passively so that you then have the freedom to live the life you want to, to be able to travel, to be able to do the things you want to do. And even if you want like to do passionate things um, that could be considered a job, like, I don't know, working for a charity or starting up a business you really care about, he suggests first, like, get a income that is remote and passive that's not necessarily something you care too much about, that's not your, like, passion project but just so you can fuel the lifestyle you want and then build <clears throat> then build your passions on top of that so he talks about ways that if you have a job to start trying to uh, increase your productivity such that you have the leverage to work remotely or if you want to be an entrepreneur how to set up a business and automate it such that you can earn a passive income and he's saying that like Although that seems perhaps very difficult, he gives very clear step-by-step ways in which you can try and make that happen. Um, So yeah, yeah, there are some books like The Habit One where you can like act on it as you're reading it. So it's like I read a chapter and maybe that afternoon I do something that was in the book. Whereas like this one, I feel like I need a few a few months and then to come back and talk about it and be like this is because at the moment i just feel like i've read it I'm like ah that's all really good and big i haven't done any of it <laughs> yeah. and then now i feel a bit shit about myself <laughs> yeah yeah or it's kind of something that it's like oh that all sounds really good and i'm like i'm capable of doing those things but maybe like in a year's time <laughs> like so I- i've got that with um uh, I've got that thinking like the, the work contract I'm on at the moment is um, two years long. Um, and basically, like the, the lifestyle that this book has made me want to go for and think yeah. it's best for me isn't really something I could do whilst doing this job. Mm. So it's kind of like, ah, oh, what it's led to me thinking is like, ah, oh, in two years' time, I'm just not going to work for six months and just travel abroad or like yeah. find other ways of like cutting down my work hours and having more freedom. But it does, I guess it just doesn't feel like, I mean, maybe something for us to explore. Like it doesn't feel like something I can do right now. Although that's what I, although that's what I want. Well, and although he would say like, yeah, if your job isn't something you can work towards turning remotely which inherently you can't really do in like person facing work um yeah then yeah. and he would say life's too short get another job <laughs> yeah i think that bit did make me laugh um i guess i guess there are some things in the book that made me think about how i can integrate some of those some of the principles he says in the current work we do do you know in particular to like you know meetings and um like emails and not using like your work phone outside of work hours and you know there's a few suggestions in there that i think are kind of worthy of yeah um, Yeah, i see what you mean yeah but they're all kind of things that uh in the book are framed as working towards this bigger goal and I, i guess you can take them and just use them anyway but it's like it's a means to an end, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Try, trying to make it such that you can take yourself out of the profit-making equation or the income generation equation. I mean, what, yeah, I guess <clears throat> talk to me about like what this book, like what was it inspired you to do? Like what lifestyle do you want to live now that you've read this book? All right. I'm trying, um, I'm trying to work out what the, um, 
like what the gap is between where you are now and where you want to be? Um, all right. So, well, uh, I'm aware we're talking about it without talking about what it is. Sure, we, we can like carry on this and have this at the end <laughs> and then do yeah. an intro in a bit if you want. <laughs> Should we do that? Yeah, yeah, all right. So, well, yeah. Whilst, whilst we're on a flow, because I also want to ask you a similar thing. I guess, yeah. like, for me, um, yeah, the, the. Let's see. Well, he's basically saying, like, what you want to. The way to set up a lifestyle um, is to have what you love, like, not tied to your income generation, right? So, so you find a way to generate income such that it can fuel all the things you want to do that you love doing. Yeah. And that, you know, he, he talks about, well, some people have businesses that are their um, babies. They're, they are the passions, the things they love. But like this book isn't that. And that's the kind of thing you can do once you've generated your, in, once you've found a different way to generate income. It's kind of like, you don't want the thing you love to be yeah. tied to paying the rent. <clears throat> um, so I guess, yeah, obviously seeing uh, face-to-face clients in psychotherapy, you can't like, there isn't a way of automating that to take me out the equation because it's inherently a per, a, like a relationship skill based job where you need to be at appointment at a particular time. You, you can't, you can't sort of auto generate something else to do that whilst you're on the beach sipping a cocktail or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I guess, do you mean like, what would I, how would I like to set up, um, remote passive income or what would I do if I had that? Yeah, I think it's more directed, I guess a good place um, to, yeah, I suppose I want to start with like, what lifestyle do you want to be living? Right. Like how how much do you want to be working? Obviously I know you've got um, a lot of passion for the current work you're doing, but like what lifestyle do you want to be living? So just a quick example, like I don't want to be working 40 hours a week. Yeah, like yeah. Monday to Friday, nine to five. I want to find a way of breaking that up and being able to kind of do other interesting things that I want to do. And I want to be able to travel when I want and have more freedom. So I yes. guess as, as a starting point, like what do you... Yeah, I do, guess... Do, do you like your current hours of work? Is that something you want to change? Oh, yes, I would... Uh, my idea would be to have some sort of... Um, bit of land that was my homestead, like where it was my home base. And on that, yeah. um, you know, very simple property where I could just keep my possessions, go to sleep, have a shower and cook food. Uh, but that, that had some ground around it to like grow a bit of food and like learn to, um, yeah, le- learn to be a bit more self-sustaining and learn to be in nature a bit more. But like that as a home base from which I could, as you say, have that freedom to go travel and go moped in around Thailand and um, get on the ped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just just I do. Uh, I mean, it, it's easy to idealise, but yeah, at the moment at least, the idea of just bumbling around to different cultures and uh, uh, yeah. I just, it's really, I always find it very um, grounding and growing to put myself in different cultures, even if I'm not really doing a particular activity, just to meet the people and eat the food and to be in the places and, and just to get a feel for how a different people lives. I, so uh, yeah, just to do a bit of slow country hopping would be nice, I guess, on top of that. I, yeah. Um, seeing different elements in nature so i love to go hiking more and um scuba diving and snorkeling uh, anything that involves like getting into different parts of nature you wouldn't usually see Mm. Mm. different trails Uh, and mountains and oceans yeah 
I guess like what what regularity are you thinking of that? Is that something like, you know, every once a month go away for five days or once every three months go off for a month? Um, well, I'm thinking on the fly, so... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I'm just, I think it's a good place for us to start, like, what kind of... What, 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 what are we aiming for here? You know, what's, yeah. what are our bodies telling us we need? And what, what are we kind of wanting to reject in our current work lives? I think when you go um, quite far away, like when you cross a continent, it's... It's nice, like, yeah, you, I feel like a month is like a nice amount of time to make sure you can actually relax in it rather than like planning this for the next day, planning this for the next day, kind of getting sucked up in the rush of it all. Um, so if I'm like building some sort of ideal, yeah, it would, it would be, it would be perhaps to leave the UK from maybe October to March. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> go to the continent where it's well, the equa- side of the equator where it's hotter for that bit of the year, and then um, maybe from like March to October, um, yeah, do more stuff in the UK, like um, working on my, my homestead, growing my food, going on mm. UK based. Um, hikes and learning more about the country I'm from. Um, hmm. So maybe a sort of split where you can, you kind of half the year you're one place, half the way you're some, half the year you're at home. I, I think I would quite like that. I like the thought of being able to kind of um, have have a job in which like I can take leave when I want to and it's not too much of an issue. Um, I think previously I've worked casually. So, you know, you're on the casual roster bank, but if you stay in a place long enough, you can kind of build a bit of trust and a bit of, um, uh, yeah, I guess of an understanding with the organisation that like sometimes you won't be around, but some, when you're back, you're back. When you're away, you're away. Um, I've had that a few times where I've just, you know, in taking off like f- five shifts or something, I get like three weeks off and things like right. that. Um, so I guess I'm just thinking about how like casual work for me in the field you know, of social work is probably my most obvious way of being able to kind of work for a bit, travel for a bit, work for a bit, travel for a bit. Like What, without what about... Tell me about your ideal, though. Like we we can come back down to reality from the top, but like start off yeah, with yeah. like you've yeah. let's we'll, we'll talk about how, but like let's say you've found a way to earn passive remote income. What do you do from that point? I think well, in a way, that's a big part of like my question is like, is there a way for me to earn whilst not doing face to face social work? I think and the um, me- inspiring aspect though is to find out find out your why and then find out your how. So let's just say you've done it. You, you yeah. have passive yeah. income. Okay. Yeah, tell, yeah, yeah. tell me about Will's lifestyle if he's got that. I think I would probably have a base in, um, in a city that I, I love and I'm surrounded by like good people and good friends and I've got like the, the relationships that I, I need in my life, you know, close, close at hand. So it's not like, I kind of start somewhere where I don't know anybody yeah. and then I go to other places from there. So I think like in terms of a secure base that involves having, you know, people around me who I want to be around. Yeah. Um, I guess in my, I guess in my head, I like the thought of having, being able to do like long weekends quite regularly. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, having the like Friday, Saturday, Sunday off or, you know, three days in the week. So I can actually like, you know, drive somewhere down the coast and go stay places for a couple of nights, you know, just as a way of like a, a temporary uh, relief from just day to day working. Um, mm. And I guess on top of that, I would love to be able to go traveling for, well, go, go away, like go fly to Spain for three to four weeks every yeah. three months and just yeah. pitch up and read and write and maybe have, you know, friends like yourself pop over and come and sell over for a week and you know just c- kind of set up a base in a different place for like three to four weeks at a time and maybe switch that up 
everywhere I go. So like one time it could be, you know, I mean, go to Cambodia for three or four weeks. Um, and then another time I go to Spain for a bit or go to America, like just being able to know that every, every three months I was going to go away for three weeks. I think that would be, that would satisfy my, mm. um, that's why like the travel bug in me and also give me like a relief from, from maybe the intensity of the work that I'm doing. A, a bit I really liked in the book that he said, you know, he talks about like these mini retirements, like, like finding ways to kind of stop for periods of time and like have these mini retirements throughout your life rather than waiting for any of your life. Is that like yeah. we learn to, I'll quote him, he says like we learn to experience life at a speed that changes us. And I think that really reflects a bit what you were saying, like when you go to a different country and you yeah. just pitch up in the same place for a month, you know, like we went to, um, Tarragona in Spain, you know, a couple of hours outside of Barcelona. And I can imagine just being in that town for like four weeks and just getting to know like, you know, some of the bars and the cafes and yeah. you know, some, some of the local traditions and getting to meet a few locals and going down to the beach. And um, I guess to expand on my idea of my ideal, really, I just want to be able to like be near a beach, be able to go surfing or do yeah. some, some sort of like regular outdoor activities. Yeah, yeah. As, as part of my day-to-day lifestyle, I think that's, you know, to bring it back to what I would be doing yeah. here in the city. I mean, I want to be able to, you know, like surf before I go to work or like yeah. after work, be able to like cycle down along the beach on the way home or so, like, catch up with people down there, you know? Yeah, I'm still, um, it sounds really appealing. I'm but I'm still like hearing you talking about work. I just want to clarify, like if you had all the remote passive income you needed, like seriously, you had that, that was coming in. You would still yeah. be kind of working Monday to Friday. Is that on taking this time off Would you, or how, how would you? Uh, oh, so if I, if I had passive income over there, yeah, I would, you've done it. You set up your business. It's, it's already done. It's automating itself. You yeah. get in that income. Like you don't need, to have a job like you can if you want to but i think i honestly think i would i'd want to work yeah i'd want to work like probably like nine till one yeah <laughs> like how many days so a week to, uh four yeah four days a week doing yeah. what <laughs> oh that's that's a huge question <laughs> that, that that's the part of it that i don't really know i suppose oh, like right. in terms of me coming up with a realistic plan is like yeah I do, I do like the face-to-face nature of my work. That's what I enjoy. But I think for me, it's more about finding ways to kind of have micro breaks just on a regular basis, you know, long weekends and yeah. mornings off and um, some weekdays off to like do writing, reading, go surfing, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. then have like regular trips to maybe go on. And I guess if we're talking about me ha- having set up a passive income abroad, yeah. I want to maybe, I want to go away for a month and do that. Like, maybe do the face to face and then go away for a month and do the passive stuff and come back. Yeah. 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 It it feels like, um, you've been thinking from like, from where you are, how could you adapt that? So it's like really satisfying you. And I'm thinking like, yeah, from the ideal, how could I work my way down to something more realistic? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably the, um, the extent of my, my dream. Currently. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So surfing every day, being able to go to Tarragona for three weeks every three months. <laughs> yeah, just pitch up probably somewhere in Spain. Yeah, like I think would be. I mean, that's what like pops into my head. It's nice to have and that. It, like you know, you know, we both talked about having some sort of home base to where you have like people around you. Know you have a sense of familiarity. It's nice to have like um, like a second one of those. So so I know. Um, for example when my parents let out this holiday home like they've had it for so long that they know like the people on the street they know that like the local businesses but it's like hours away from where they live normally so it's it's uh, sort of it's a home from home and it's nice to like also go somewhere that it does kind of feel like a second home as well (laughs) Uh, maybe I'd like that (laughs) 
Uh, I can imagine just being like really annoyed, like meeting you in your second home in Spain and you like talk in Spanish. To <laughs> like, like, you know them. I'm like, oh, fuck off, Luke. <laughs> <It's crazy. laughs> I'll use you out, por favor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, just like they know you in the bar. I guess that, that is a bit, that's a nice thought, isn't it? Um, I think I like the thought of my base being kind of the, the ultimate place I want to, like having everyone around me I wanted and it being like a nice place in the mm. first place. You know? so, so I'm thinking like uh, a spring summer base and an autumn winter base, both of which I can use as platforms to go to brand new places from. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it, it uh. does get me thinking a bit about, um, you know, some of the stuff he says around, I suppose I'm paraphrasing here, but like, if you go somewhere with like an attitude of, you know, looking for new work or looking for new things to do, like an open accepting attitude, like yeah. you'll probably work it out. So I guess I'm just thinking like, for example, if I spent like six months in Melbourne yeah, and then like moved and spent six months in Sydney and then like kind of jumped between the two of them, like if I wanted to make that work, I could, you know, or like mm. move up somewhere a bit warmer. Like I'd, I think it gets you thinking a bit, a bit bigger about like what is actually possible. Like some of the, some of the restrictions you put on yourself yeah. for not doing, for not doing things just out of convenience or simplicity yeah. or r- routine or like, you know, sticking with the whatever's mediocre and comfortable at the time. Yeah. Like it is possible. Like if I want to go and like live in Queensland near the beach and maybe find some casual social work for three months of the year, like, I, I could do that. Like if I if I put my mind to it, mm. I could do that. You know? Yeah. I guess it's just one example that pops into my head. Um, I'm not sure. I'm interested in what what prevents us from, from doing those things. Like, why do we like to stick with the, the trusted and true? Like, what, why do like we... It's comfort zone, not, isn't it? Familiarity. Yeah. It's... We don't have staying in where it's safe um, rather than jumping out to the unknown especially when no one else is doing it so as well as it being the unknown it's also like against the green um, yeah true and it's also you know what, what's to say like somewhere else is better I get it's a, it's a hard one isn't it because sometimes there's value in like staying where you are and really like getting to know the people where you are and investing yeah, yeah. investing time there so you can like deepen your connections and relationships yeah. with people. So I, I think I think for me it's more about how can I build in more more of the lifestyle I want into the the day to day, month to month. Yeah. As opposed to kind of I mean I am thinking about it a bit like relocating, but you know, more, more so about yeah, that that month to month stuff rather than yeah, well, that one kind big of move. That yeah. perpetual travelling um lifestyle that you sort of sort of encouraging it's the irony of that is the pleasure you often get from going to new cultures is being around the people who do stay put so like it's yeah, like yeah. say we go to yeah. some town in spain like the atmosphere is because there are the locals but if everyone did what you're suggesting there would be no locals <laughs> yeah it's true. It's a bunch of- there's a bunch of tourists. Yeah. <laughs> you may as well say. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I suppose, have you have you thought about that? Um, I suppose you you can kind of work on your own terms at the moment, can't you? You know, you, to a degree, you can pick the amount of clients you've got. You can take leave when you want. Um, yeah, and so I guess from. Yeah, the book's perspective, he's talking about uh, working remotely and um, turning your work into automation so so you don't need to be doing something whilst you're earning. I guess I have the remoteness um, in being, I guess, since COVID and I've been working, you know, on a laptop or on the phone, um, but not the automated way like you know still have to be available at particular times for appointments yeah. and like yeah. psychotherapy doesn't really have an option an option not to do that and like yeah i do 
I wouldn't, similar to you, I wouldn't not do it if I did set up a passive income. But I guess it would relieve the pressure of, so let's say I set up a business that was earning some remote passive income such that I didn't have to work. I feel like it would be, you know, however much you say, like, you shouldn't be doing it for the money. The, the relief of knowing you genuinely didn't have to do this, <laughs> like the rent would be paid yeah. if you did this or not. It just feels yeah. more like a choice. And that in itself, yeah, yeah, I, think, I think would give it more, um, it would keep it fresh and enjoyable because at any point, you mm. know, you, if you really, if you d- didn't want to, like you don't, to give it up wouldn't be giving up your, bills and your rent and your food you know yeah yeah there is a part of it isn't it like you you know i was chatting to um a friend today about you know my current work situation yeah. saying that like I, I could if i wanted to go and like take take this like three to six month no work break now if i wanted to but i know that like the next two years of my contract are probably gonna be like really good for me in my learning like financially i've got some goals i need to try and hit I'd like to try and hit um it, it kind of feels like I do have a choice but also at the same time like I'm very aware that the consequences that um aren't aren't great so I suppose we, we often like look at the consequences don't we like to, to any like major decision like that like quitting a job or moving somewhere else or yeah um but yeah as you say like having that like relief of passive income or just knowing that things were covered I guess he he talked about he used an example of a guy who what was he in I think he's in law and he had a good position in a good firm or whatever and and quit it to go teach surfing somewhere and everyone around him was like I can't believe you're giving all this up but I guess the point he was making in the book is like he wasn't giving it up like he still has all his qualifications and years of experience if he wanted to teach for two years and teach surfing for two years got sick of it and wanted to go back into law he could do it quite easily you know it's mm. so it's this he, he suggests it's kind of a false uh yeah like a, a fallacy to think when we jump out we're jumping out for good because mm. realistically if i um stopped what i was doing now for a couple of years i could probably pick up psychotherapy again after that and similarly i know you know you're on a two year placement but probably you could it wouldn't take too much work if you dropped it now came back to it in a couple of years and said i want to carry on with what i was doing yeah, exactly you find a way to make it happen yeah. right yeah it's kind of encouraged me to feel that like i do have more flexibility than i that i want and i guess that the beauty of um the work that i do is there's so many different ways of of working you know you can do part-time two days a week you could get a full-time contract you could do four days a week you could be on the casual book so you just can't do a shift every now and again permanent part-time and i think that's something that i'm really i suppose it's it's just come as part of realizing what this job entails that there's yeah. so many different roles out there so you know that's in terms good. of yeah I, I feel like i've got options but maybe just not at the moment so i've kind of tied myself into the, mm. this two year two year experience which is like great it's really good for me but also like i feel the moment i'm locked in that i feel like my um i, I feel like trapped without like yeah. without even knowing it like well yeah so I, get, I, I feel trapped even though i'm just definitely not like i could i could yeah. just go i don't want to turn up tomorrow but I'm i think being there yeah i think this is a mindset thing because I, I feel the same way but but i think if I think it would be really helpful and healthy to somehow ingrain in yourself that you are not trapped. And I'm not, I don't mean you will, but like anyone who feels like that, me as well, my position is like you, this is a choice you are making because you want to do it. And if you didn't want to, you, you can not do it. So like the feeling of I've trapped, I've trapped myself and locked myself in is, it's sort of a, a mental cage. It's not a, re, it's not a cage in reality, right? It's, it, we can stop what we're doing whenever we want and we'll be fine <laughs> yeah yeah is yeah and i think that that's a that's a good thing to know and i think that's something i've realized from this book is that i do actually have some flexibility i suppose you know worked worked hard to 
you know, get the experience I have and with my qualifications. And if, if I did want to like take a break and go back to it and work part time for a little bit, that's right. okay. Um, I, I can. What what I've really noticed is is like for the first time in my life, how easily that people can get trapped into that cycle of like full time monday to friday nine to five work that like i yeah. guess i never wanted for myself yeah. and i never yeah. thought that would be me and you no know, it is at the moment and i'm you know i'm really as i say like really enjoying the experience of having at the moment but i think i can just see how people are just like oh like full time is great you get like a consistent income you get all your leave covered you get all your you know your sick pay and you get a certain amount of annual leave every year and a pay rise each year and a guaranteed income and all that sort of thing. And I suppose like as much as those are like good things, like it doesn't, it still doesn't satisfy me. Yeah. You know, like I want, I want, I want freedom, not like security. Yeah. In, in, yeah, yeah. On its own, on its own. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess that's what the book's trying to sell, isn't it? That so appeal to that desire. Hmm. Did you, um, I guess, like, um, some of the the section there around um, elimination. Yeah, um, that was interesting talking to you about. Um, but, but there's one thing that we we've spoken about before. And, uh, I guess I get I start get give a bit of an introduction. Like, so elimination is around like, yeah, making sure like you're prioritizing the things you want to do in your life and at the workplace. And you basically saying like, we waste a lot of time on tasks that we we either don't need to be doing or we we're inventing just to look important yeah he bases like it at, we're doing something he bases it around Pareto's yeah. law doesn't he i don't know if you want to yeah, explain that yeah so that's yeah yeah so um that's basically like we fill the time we have and if we're rushed we, we, we'll we'll get it done so it's basically yeah. like if you've got if you've got an assignment that you've been given like four weeks to do um You'll take absolute. You'll take four weeks to do it. Whereas if you have like two days, you'll get it yeah. done in two days. And I think the um, just before I had had back like the the two primary goals of this elimination he's talking about is like um, having like fewer interruptions and distractions. So like making sure that like the time you use to do things, yeah, you're doing things properly. And I think that's just something I found in my life for sure. Like a lot of tasks you think are going to take longer. If you actually just do it and focus, mm. you just get them done. Yeah, a yeah, longer. yeah. No, I've definitely experienced that before. Like, um, it reminds me of my dissertation on my masters, where it's like they give you a year to do it. When it, I kind of think, like, how much time I probably wasted. Not, yeah, like, or, or time, how much busy work I put in. When actually, if if they said you know, you've got six weeks to do this rather than a year. I, I probably, I mean, it would have been stressful, but probably the outcome would have been quite similar to what it was anyway. Mm. Um, so I, I remember, yeah, being reminded of that. But I, I was thinking, um, no, Pareto's law was that 80-20 principle. So it's like... So oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. So because like, um, so for example, in a company, probably... Uh, 20% of the employees are producing 80% of the value and in your own life, like 20% of your uh, time probably is producing 80% of your productivity or perhaps even more than that. But it's like a basic um, idea to be aware of that like, yeah, we basically waste a lot of time and energy doing busy work when actually it's only a small amount of what we do that gets us the results we want and noticing the, uh, amount of crap we do that probably isn't adding to that and just cutting it out. Some example he talked about in the yeah. book was like, um, if you run a business, that classic um, saying of the customer's always right is, like, oh no, some customers provide like 80% of your hassle and only a very small amount of your income. So you can just fire them <laughs> and just only work with yeah, the customers yeah. who don't like complain or give you any shit. Uh, yeah, that's quite yeah. funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I, I've definitely like translated a bit of this across into my um, into like my day to day work life. I suppose it's just got me really thinking about like when I'm at work, like 
wh- when am I actually doing the productive work? Oh. When is everything else around it kind of like either planning or maybe fluffing around or talking about what I'm going to do? And like, it's, it's basically getting me to do like more in a shorter amount of time, I suppose. Uh-huh. Being a bit more like precise and concise with everything I'm doing. Yeah. I really, really liked the, uh, the section on um, being on like selective ignorance. So this bit's around uh, like yeah. what, what inputs we allow into our, yeah. our brains and th- things that like distract us. So to expand on the distraction part, you know, stuff he says is around like, don't check the news, like ask people in cafes, oh, anything interesting in the news today? Which I know we've both been, um, been doing recently, like ignoring the news. Yeah. A bit and not watching TV and what else you talk about? Um, don't not responding to work outside of work. Um, it's, it's all basically around like using your mental energy when it's needed and not kind of allowing unnecessary distractions to creep in. Yeah. Setting those bound, like it's respecting yourself enough to set boundaries for yourself. So it's like, um, yeah, if, does, if, especially if a case, if you work for yourself, cause it's so often that if you work a, a job job, then, um, you, you can go from, say, school into a job in which an institution or, or an authority will just set up all your boundaries for you. So you never like, necessarily have to think about it. They tell you, be here at nine, you can leave at this time, your break's at this time. Like, here are the projects you have to do. So you can kind of get away without having to set any personal boundaries around that kind of stuff. Whereas hmm. um, he's saying, yeah, to kind of take more control and ownership over those boundaries and decide like actually no i'm i'm not going to check my email 30 times a day i'm going to say i'm going to check it for 20 minutes at six o'clock and like i'm not going to look at it (laughs) until that time and when i do look at it i'm going to do it purposely and like clear it and reply to stuff that needs to and um automate anything that's wasting my time yeah he says um like not consuming without without intent yeah. So, you know, that, that'd just be the typical just like scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or something and mm. or just kind of reading news articles that aren't important. And yeah, that, that did get me thinking a bit about like the Tony Robbins side of things when we're doing stuff that's like unproductive and unimportant. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, very know, similar. Like not, not, yeah, not spending too much time in that. And it's, it's interesting to think, you know, around like deadlines and you know especially with like assignments like how much time do you spend just like fucking around or procrastinating or being distracted and like really cutting that time down if you think like if you cut out all that crap and that just yeah procrastinating and yeah those phone calls that don't need to happen and it's even got me being a bit like blunter and shorter on the phone at work to people like people call up go like hey how are you i'm like hey how can i help (laughs) just answering did you um Listen to the audiobook or re- or read it. I or... did, I did, yeah. So yeah. the um, just as kind of by the by, but the the guy who reads the audiobook, I think like I don't know if you've ever seen Tim Ferriss like giving I interviews or chatting or on his podcast or on YouTube or anything, but like he's a really sort of a cool, calm, mild mannered kind of guy. But the guy who reads the audiobook <laughs> is so like. <laughs> not aggressive, but like uh, assertively like punk, like powerful in his speech. And it, uh, it, yeah, it really yeah. comes across quite, um, close to arrogant in a way that Tim Ferriss is absolutely not. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. Cause I actually <laughs> put a few on my list to listen to some of his podcasts. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe you'll yeah, notice but I, I it guess then. It but it's, um, yeah, I, I can't remember why I brought that up, but there's something about, yeah, the way he, the guy who reads the audiobook is almost being judgmentally arrogant in a way that I found quite funny and enjoyed, <laughs> but it doesn't actually yeah. come across <laughs> no, no. when you um, listen to Tim Ferriss talk about the same ideas. Right. <laughs> Did you, um, so uh, sorry, I, sorry, I just realized why okay. I brought that up. So you're talking about the phone call stuff, right? So when he's yeah. re- in the book, when he's talking about, um, like, email auto responses he's given or he's uh, talking about examples of how he would kind of palm people off in the office and he, he's like 
<laughs> he's like, so someone comes over to like his cubicle and he's got his headphones on and he's just like, <laughs> hi Linda, how can I help? <laughs> and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> rather than like, like don't, don't say, how are you? Don't like, let it turn into chit chat. He's like, I've got two minutes before a meeting. What can I do? And she's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's like, oh, no, tell me. And it's like, oh, it's going to take you long. Okay, well, yeah. drop me an email. <laughs> and, yeah. It's, and it, I, I guess the way that comes across in the audiobook is almost rude in a way that yeah. I don't think Tim Ferriss would be, but it's just the way the guy reads yeah. the audio book makes it kind I of I think fast. especially, especially because like, I don't know about you, I think you probably do like, I was playing on like one and a half, 1.75 <laughs> times speed. So it makes it sound like, you know, 1.75 times more like aggressive than it already did. Like, <laughs> hey, I've got two minutes, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> or like his, his little email ones where it's like, um, hi, I'll only be checking my emails on Mondays and Wednesdays at six o'clock till six thirty. I'll reply to you that time. Thank you for supporting my <laughs> increase my workflow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, no. Yeah, I imagine if it was spoken a bit slower, it might. Yeah, that was funny. Um, I'm interested um, in what your thoughts were on the the part about the art of non finishing. So, like oh, knowing yeah. when to just like cut your losses and end a task. I know you've spoken before about reading books that you kind of got like a quarter of the way through and been like, nah, can't be That is, so this is like well against my personality. Like when I start something, I feel this like compulsive urge to finish it. And so, yeah, I do, do find it difficult. But um, for example, he talked about if you're in the cinema and you're not enjoying the film, just get out. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I don't know if I could bring myself to do that, however bad the film was. You hear um, people doing that, don't you? Like, leaving the cinema. I don't think I've ever done it. Yeah. I think so. But I guess if, you, if you're not enjoying it, then, what? yeah, why not? Um, I guess, that I just, you know, I suppose, just to drop back to the point, <clears> is that what he's saying is, it's like, there's all this time you could have to do yeah. the things that you really love and enjoy. Yeah. And if you're serious about doing those things, here's like a hundred ways you can cut out the crap yeah. in your life and like save time for the things that are more important. Yeah, it's so quite existential, isn't it? It's like, yeah, really consider what you love and what makes you tick and try and design your life such that you can do those things and not have to wait till you're like 60 and retired. <laughs> uh, have freedom now yeah, yeah, rather yeah. than later. Um, sorry, yeah, back, back to your point on the art non-finishing. Um, is that something you, you practice now, even though you find it difficult? Or um, I'm trying to think. I, I, I want to say yes, but I can't think of any examples. I, I think so, yeah. Or at least um, not necessarily. So what I'm thinking about reading now. I wouldn't necessarily be like, I'm not enjoying this. But like, let's say I've gone down a rabbit hole of like following. Um, uh, a, a, a topic and I've started a book on it and that book's referencing another book and I found out that the book it's referencing is actually more highly esteemed or something that the book I'm reading is I might put that book down and read the other one so um, I, I, yeah, I, I would I have not finished books on purpose to choose something that's more specifically what I was looking for than the knowledge I had when I started yeah. the first one if that makes any sense yeah um, so, so yeah, kind of, but, but not in the way of like, yeah, don't like this. I'm just not going to. Yeah. It, it's the it sunk, sunken cost fallacy, about... isn't it? I definitely do it with social situations. Like if I'm at like a party or a gathering that I'm just not enjoying, I don't like the people there. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's quite, I guess that's one, one example. I get it, it does get you really thinking about like how precious time is though and how how much I don't to call it disrespect, but like how often we just do things that we just don't really want to be doing that don't serve us. Yeah. Or like getting stuck in I mean, I hope that's happening to me less and less, but I guess I just wanna increasingly spend more time where I want to and less time where I don't. Um I think it I mean this might be getting a bit uh deep for for this but i think it's uh i think it's built into like the christian ethic of like obligation and self-sacrifice and like putting yourself to one side for the sake of others and it's kind of built into the way we raise children 
And um, the reason that's never appealed to me is because if everyone sacrifices themselves for everyone else, then no one ends up happy because everyone's left with their needs gone unmet. I, I much prefer the ethic of like, um, you know, on planes when they say, you know, put on your own oxygen mask first and then help, uh, then help your children. It's kind of like when you're happy and your needs are met, you actually have more enjoyable capacity to do things for others. So, um, that's it. Yeah. And I think, I think it, um, yeah, it definitely talks about, you know, how like sacrifice is rewarded in our culture mm. and, um, I, I, what, what he's gearing towards is more about like being productive and not busy. Like I've, I've definitely seen people who, you know, want to be seen to be busy, you know, or seem to be stressed in order to get things done. Like there's just mm. kind of weird cultural shift. Uh, well, cu- culture that happens that people like need to be seen to be doing lots and lots and lots of things to be like successful to be getting things done. Whereas he's saying like, I'm getting shitloads done, but I just work four hours a week. <laughs> I guess yeah, it, yeah. Guess you think of, yeah, yeah, productivity. You it's it's not about the amount of work you do, but of how productive that y- your work is, right? So you could uh, you could spend twelve hours a day digging a hole and filling it back in that'd be lots and lots of hard work and by the end of the day you would have produced nothing um yeah so, yeah, so it's example. like yeah. work works are relevant to the value you provide for yourself and humanity i my mate uh i remember i don't know why he brought this up but he he was having this discussion with his girlfriend and said like if we had a kid <laughs> and we were paying him like uh 10 pounds a week pocket money to mow the lawn and you found out that he was paying the next door neighbor's kid five pounds a week to mow the lawn and he was just making a five pound profit without doing anything like what (laughs) what would you think about that like if that was your kid (laughs) and uh i i I mean i was like oh that i'd find that so great (laughs) like if my kid had thought to do that (laughs) um yeah yeah i could use my time better yeah, maybe I'd like, um, you know, start to play him at his own game and uh, like offer to pay the next door neighbor's kid directly to do it instead of him. And then saying like, well, I, I'll, you know, so rather than making a loss and sort of see where his mind goes with that or whatever. But, um, but I, I guess I brought that up because it kind of hammers home the point of, um, yeah, work versus productivity. Because I think the argument back why um yeah i think my friend's girlfriend said something like well i i would be disappointed with that because i would want to be teaching him her strong work ethic and and then i think my friend was saying well is it the work ethic that's important or is it the like making sure the job gets done that's important like there's a difference Mm -hmm. between laziness in terms of not doing anything for yourself and others versus um i guess strategizing so you're producing as much value for as little effort which seems to make Mm. sense to me Mm. it's got me thinking a bit about how my work hours are typically quite like restricted i don't i guess maybe even for yours as well like you can't do a one hour session with someone in half an hour (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i guess it you know, would that, yeah the yeah. the fi- sorry to cut off but yeah the field itself has set these boundaries and i guess you'd have to be quite a maverick to be like well i'm just going to put that to one side like let's look at the actual efficiency of uh resolving your issue and put time to bed like if we can do some of this work by <laughs> i don't know sending you a video to watch your book to read and then minimizing the amount of time we need to interact to reach the root of the problem, then it doesn't matter how long the session is, but like that, that would be like really taking the field and like ripping it apart and yeah. doing your own thing with it. Oh, you I mean, there's a few options, I guess like, you know, if you had a full time position and you felt like the first two hours of your day were pretty redundant, yeah. you could make the argument and be like, yeah, like I'm happy to take a pay cut, but I'll, I'll start at 10 and not eight. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be. I'll prove to you that I'm just as effective in that amount of time. Yeah. Or you yeah. know, there's some jobs where people go. I'd rather do four ten-hour days than five eight-hour days. Uh, uh, yeah. I suppose it's worth thinking about the different kind of flexibility you can have. And I guess with your your work as well, like you can um, 
you can put you know book clients on you know certain days of the week or certain ends of ends of the day to free up you know your weekend or to free up um other yeah. days as well like there is ways i suppose yeah you've got to get a bit creative but it, it gets me thinking about like you know do i spend all eight hours of the day doing like the most 100 percent most productive mm. work or if i just if i just turned up at 10 would i get the same amount of work mm. yeah um Maybe, maybe not. It's difficult to say because I know with like the current job I've got and the next one I'm doing next year, but that's probably not the case. But I can imagine lots of other jobs where that would be the case, where you might be able to get some sort of flexibility or be able to job craft in the way that like you always had your mornings free to like go surfing or you always had a Friday off to go mm. hiking or whatever. Um, job craft. I've not heard that before. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just a term I heard about you know being able to make adjustments to your work hours and the amount of days you work and i guess having mm. negotiating with your boss i think that's something he gets onto in the book as well like what what ways can you negotiate maybe working less hours or working certain days and not other ones yeah and i guess that there's more options than you think yeah um, yeah makes sense goodbye mate See you. I really enjoyed uh, <laughs> yeah next week things done by david allen yeah i heard you say next things things done david allen so i think what will just said was next week we're going to be discussing getting things done by david allen which um i think will tie in really nicely with this whole um productivity lifestyle design trio we've been we've been on Sounds good. Yeah. Cheers, mate. See you then. (laughs) Bye.